Um, Ellie Angel was an inspirational teacher here and she taught at Kimilda for eight years. Sadly, Ellie passed away in 1998. So tonight, this is to honour her and the fact that she loved poetry and the students writing literature for Camilla College. An Anzac, a soldier, a fighter for life, a man in a team and a man on the field. His life for yours or your life for his? Is it really worth it to send him away to a land afar, to fight for your freedom and for his own? A lover, a father, a man to depend on, someone to be there when your life falls apart, someone to hold you when you're feeling down, to love and to cherish you and to make you feel special. To lose him forever, or just his mind, to the twisted world of the war. Will he come home? A brother, an uncle, a person to joke with. Someone to laugh with and to boss you around. Someone to prank, to trick and to tease. There might be a grudge, but love reigns high. Will he still joke when from the war he returns? Or will he be wounded in body or mind, like the many other men you see? A brave man at heart, a man to defend us, to fight for our freedom, and to sacrifice his life, we owe him our freedom, to speak when we will and to do what we want, whenever we want, a man who belongs in so many lives, um, but has been sent away to fight for peace in the world. An Anzac, a soldier, a lover, a father, a brother, an uncle, and a brave man at heart. His clothes so worn, they speak speak pointless and ragged, the scars engraved in his side, permanent and deliberate. The red stains on his destructive hands, potentially cold blood or warm pain. His dark, intense stare telling a million discarded memories, but also craving for an impossible, desperate desire. I neither need nor want anything of him, yet I'm curious, does this naive child, hardly a summer older, paint lives or take lives? I walk on, I do not need these answers. Hi, good evening. I will be reading my poem overdue message. I wrote this earlier this year upon finding out that a previous teacher, Miss Buckridge, had passed away, and I wrote this in response. It is tragic that my feelings have been unspecified till now. However, I do hope that you receive this message somehow. Make it known that I do realise it is a bit too late, but my message must be known for someone to contemplate. Thank you for the faith in women you have influenced upon a girl. I've learned to, that to succeed, I must be driven, even if I drive against the world. You taught me that respect is something I must earn, not by authority, but by acceptance and willingness to learn. I've learned of independence, of courage and of strength, from someone who was stronger, but whose life was short of length. I have never met someone as resilient or as admirable as you. It just pains me that this message is far too urgent. Humans are a vile, twisted creation, obsessed with devastation. They rule the world like kings, force mountains to their knees, bend, burn, break trees, for greed, not creed. They build their castles as a mockery, mounting a crown of twisted thorns into the head of Mother Nature convoluted creations, and eternal damnation for all other things living. Oh, the need for a leader, a person of passion, intelligence, integrity. They erect their empires from the bosom of our mother, only to be shunned by the Lord our Father. Then they elect their kings, undoubtedly the most male violent tyrants. The charisma of our men, the speeches of adults, the dedication of good leaders, all turn, all change, with power and greed, their catalyst, conquering everything and anything. Oh, the need for good kings to clean off this abhorrent stain. They are young, like a vibrant butterfly, but to compare them to this would be a lie. They do not comprehend. The earth is their mother, we their brother. They fear death. Do they not understand? Can they ever understand? They desire immortality and escape, but they are only mortal. This is reality. Nature lives forever, reuses itself. Man will destroy himself. They build their buildings, craft their cars, make their mirrors, 
all to the expense of the natural world. They think they are creating immortality. Only time thrives in time. Their creativity slowly dies, just like the rest. It's for the best. The world doesn't need this mess standing in the mother's chest. Mirrors are your creation. They show your true damnation, an image of your ageing, fueling your fear which draws ever near. My brothers, sisters, while you have been swayed, you can be saved. Cast out the hungry beasts inside of you, fueling your fear. Travel through the wild. You can never find immortality. Find this morality. Accept mortality.